dominating a team that has a great offense like the White Sox. He's at 94 pitches. 94 pitches. Leave the dude in. I know he allowed a runner on base. Eighth inning. He's dealing. Leave the dude in. And here's what Dusty Baker had to say right after the game. That was tough to take. You can put it on my game. And we'll talk about this in this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisen. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Shows. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram and at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. And Eric, I know why you paused, because just like all of us, we were watching the TV when those runs were happening. We were like what's going on like this was one of those games and and i mean the end of the game is on dusty we'll talk about that there were some things that happened leading up to that where you didn't have to be in that situation you got to look at the game from beginning to end to really evaluate a baseball game properly but keep us going man let's go yeah and definitely uh, the reason i paused is because i had the youtube video going and i heard myself and i was like wait i gotta find that youtube video because this is very distracting <laughs> just like uh, dusty baker pulling or kitty he was dealing 94 pitches and i believe this is 10 straight uh quality starts for him and or, or something like that he's doing great and this is why i think jose or kitty uh, when they go down to a four man uh, rotation in the ALDS, uh, that this is some, uh, he's probably going to have the upper hand, especially with the way he's pitching. And we're going to talk about in a little bit. There's um, the uh, playoffs were announced and they're taking away some of the travel days, especially in the later rounds after uh, games one and two of the playoffs, because they wanted to make sure they finished before the cold part of. October and November come. So that's why they they went ahead, took away some of the travel days. So you may have to deal with a, a five man rotation in the world series. So that's why you're not going to see, you may see somebody like Luis Garcia and maybe Christian Javier, uh, one of those two guys in the playoffs, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this game. It started off looking like the White Sox were the bad news bears. Uh, it just the first inning you, you had Josh Harrison felt fall in his butt like what twice he tried to catch the ball and then it went by him. Then uh, they tried to relay the ball and then he fell in his butt again. And I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Their baseball fundamentals are not good. And the Astros took advantage and for, they scored two runs, one on a Alvarez. Um, sacrifice fly then Bregman continues to stay hot with that double but unfortunately the bats kind of cooled off after the first inning you had Maldonado with a hit you had Myers with a hit but unfortunately and Tucker got a hit and uh, got stolen base but you didn't piece together the hits like the Astros have been doing recently no I mean and we talked on the last show Eric how 19 other 21 runs were with two outs they were hitting with runners in scoring position they had been absolute nails, and they just were not nails tonight. They didn't get the job done. They did only score two runs. Now, while we're going to get to the end of the game and what Dusty did and didn't do or should or shouldn't have done, um, and you clearly said in his statement that he had, he basically takes the loss on, um, as I think he should, you as an offense, you as a team have got to come in here. Johnny Cueto, even though he has an ERA under three, this is a White Sox team that has a losing record at home. Tomorrow, you have probably the game of the year between Dylan Cease and, and Justin Verlander, and you would like the Astros to get a win before that game to take the pressure off you. Now, the good thing is, the outlier is that the Yankees lost again, lost like six to nothing. Jose Siri actually knocked in a run for the Rays. That was beautiful to see. Anthony Rizzo is hitting his bat or his helmet in the 
dugout out of frustration. I mean, the Yankees, if they weren't 10 games up on the Blue Jays, Eric, I don't think that you would that that I think the Yankees might be in trouble. Um, and the only reason why they're not in trouble is because they have such a big lead. But tonight's game started with the offense, lack of production. Some people would say that's because of the lineup. And um, and um, I actually sent a DM to Jeremy Brennan from the Killer Bees because he tweeted out, he said, you know what? I'm so glad that Mauricio Dubon got to get the most at-bats in the game tonight <laughs> because he made the final out of the inning. So there's that. Um, I really thought Altuve was going to be swinging on that first pitch, Eric, because that's a pitch that he knocked a home run on it last time he faced Liam Hendricks. It just didn't happen. Yeah, a lot of people are in chat are asking why did Altuve not start today's game. I think it was just a scheduled day off. They want to keep him fresh, and, uh, and unfortunately, it just so happened that um, Jeremy Pena has been dealing with a little bit of a stiff neck, and uh, so he got the day off. And uh, apparently, it's day to day, and it's not anything serious, but it's just something that they're going to be monitoring, and they want to keep him fresh. So they they went ahead and sat him today. Altuve sat. So I did a little short on YouTube and explaining how do you get Alvarez, Yuli, and Mancini in the lineup and Diaz? Well, you have to have, unfortunately, you have to have somebody like uh, Altuve out of the lineup, and you never want Altuve out of the lineup. But uh, it, you could have seen um, him do something heroic against Liam Hendricks like he did in the uh, in playoffs last year, but um, it just unfortunately it just wasn't meant to be in this game. And but overall, uh, Arkady did great and phenomenal. But I just there's you can't say anything more. He didn't walk anybody. Lowered his ERA. He only allowed six hits. And uh, but unfortunately, Montero faced five batters. Didn't get any of those five batters out. Uh, allowed three runs, three hits, three earned runs two walks and he's been a reliable reliever all year. So this is kind of anomaly, but he has been kind of well, struggling a little bit. The recently. last, yeah, the last three outings he's had, he's given up like five runs in the last five and two thirds innings. He has not been good. I was shocked that they had him coming in, Eric and yes, AJ Hinch and both dusty Baker do tend to uh, pull starters early. It seems Okay. Look, no, fire Dusty, that's not the answer. Bring back AJ Hinch. Come on, guys. Let's like let's let's be rational here. Y'all do realize that we still have the best record in the American League by like three games. I mean two and a half games, I think. No, they lost again. Uh well, we, sure it's not three. Yeah, but because they they didn't gain a game because okay, we lost. Okay. Okay, I thought we were three games up. Okay, two and a half games, three games, whatever. We're up on the Yankees. Okay, I could be Yankees, wrong. But... That's okay. The Yankees stink. The bottom line is this. Dude, the pitches he was throwing, Eric, I don't know if you saw the movement on the pitches. His pitches up in the zone, they look like some wicked Josh Miller had stuff. this wicked smile. He was just like, ah. It was, <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, Eric, his pitches, the movement, the way the the, the fastballs were tailing up and away from the right-handed batters. I mean, it was it was like he was putting some weird spin on the ball. I hadn't seen his pitches move like that. I mean, I know they moved, but tonight it was something. Why don't you keep him in? The only six hits he gave up were singles. He wasn't giving up doubles. He wasn't giving up base hits. He didn't just give up a solo shot. He didn't even have 100 pitches. You let the guy finish the inning. Let him do his work. It makes no sense to bring in a guy the last two outings that have given up up to that point two runs in those last couple innings he's pitched. And then he gives up, what, two or three today, and the White Sox end up winning. I mean, baseball is going to baseball, but I, I just – why did Dusty Baker make that move with the two outs? Why did he panic? I'll, I'll tell you in a second – Okay. Uh, I have the answer in a second. So let's um, go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about Bilt Bar because I feel like I need yeah. Bilt Bar after that game. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know if a Bilt Bar is going to cure the blues of losing to the White Sox, but it definitely will cure your hunger in, in the right way because a lot of times, look, let's face it, folks, we go to the refrigerator or we go to the pantry and we get things that are, for the most part, 
not good for us. And although we love a good candy bar, we love a good bag of chips, that's not the best way to go. A lot of those things don't even have protein and they have tons of sugar and they're bad for you. So this is what I want you to do. Check out cookie dough chunk puffs. Yes, that's right. Cookie dough, 100% chocolate and a marshmallow puff. It's infused with collagen protein. Why is that important? Because your body absorbs it more efficiently. And you're basically treating not only your diet, your health, you're treating yourself to a decadent, amazing snack with 160 calories, 15 grams of protein in every single one of them. And I mean, you could go buy a box for your family and friends, or you could hoard them for yourself like you do, or like we do in my fridge or in my pantry. We've got them everywhere. What's great is the Built Bars are, they don't only taste good, but they're good for you, like I said. So you need to go get the Cookie Dough Chunk Puff. They are amazing. And this is how you get it. You go to Built.com, okay? You use a promo code, Locked On 15 that gives you 15% off. That's the same discount we get when we order. So use the promo code locked on 15 for our listeners. You get 15% off at built.com. All right. With the playoff schedule uh, coming out and if you can't afford playoff tickets, you know, the best place to go. How about Hooters of NASA? They have the great wings, the great brews and the world famous Hooters girls. They're always there to uh, serve, uh, to give you the, the service with the smile. And you know what? There's TVs everywhere. So if you want to watch the multiple games, if you want to watch whatever you want to watch, there's TV there. They put on the sound, everything there. So you know what? When I go there, I like to get the chicken tenders with the curly fries with teriyaki sauce. And uh, Brett likes the honey chipotle uh, d- buffalo wings with fries and what's your favorite so come hang out with the world famous hooters girls anytime your astros play you'll see and hear the actions because they love the astros like you love their wings um whether you're dining in ordering out or uh, carry out for food um it's a great place for food in webster and it's um they're doing a they just had a 45 person trip to astros game i believe they're doing another one pretty soon and it just Go to Astros games with the Hooters girl and ask Rosie why she has had worn black socks. She has not worn black socks since October 26, 2005. I have a feeling I know why. So come enjoy happy hour or should we say happy hour owl specials Monday through Friday, Friday, three to six. And uh, so many drink specials. Don't forget about Thursday, Thursday with drink specials all day. I-45 South. Exit FM 528 for great wings and the best service from the world famous Hooters girls. 2796 Gulf Freeway. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to our thoughts with Dusty. Thoughts by Dusty. All right. So we already kind of did this before the show. Uh, Dusty Baker said, you can put it on me if you want said that they went to Rafael Montero because he had the freshest arm available and Andrew Vaughn didn't have good numbers against him. And he said he also thought about hitting McCormick for Devon in the ninth inning too. So basically, freshest arm, didn't have good numbers. Um, Andrew Vaughn didn't have good numbers against him. So he went for the matchups instead of what was going good. But he, okay, that's 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 a great justification. Why would you leave him tied it up? Why would you leave him in even longer to do more damage if he doesn't have it? He's clearly missing the zone. Like I said, he's been nails. He's been one of my favorite relief pitchers. Still is for this ball club. I think he is one of the better relief pitchers this season overall. But his last five point two innings, eight hits, six earned runs, three walks. Five strike. That's unacceptable. An ERA of 9.53, Eric, compared to his last 30 games where it's 4.03, 29 innings pitched. Well, 13 earned runs, but 29 strikeouts. He clearly is not getting it done. And if it was, I mean, I guess he said it was his freshest, his freshest arm out of the bullpen, maybe because they didn't use him a lot this weekend. Is that his justification? I'm looking. He pitched on the 14th, and he pitched on the 11th. So he had just pitched. Okay, he only pitched one out in the previous game. So I guess technically he would be his freshest arm. I get that. But after you give up the tie, to me, you've got to go with someone else. When Matan came out there, he looked good. 
I still go back to you shouldn't have pulled Urquidy when he's dealing under 100 pitches, only six singles. What in the heck? Like, my concern, Eric, is are they going to do this in October? Are they going to do this in the playoffs? Because if they do, we're going to freaking lose. We're going to lose. And at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, Eric, that is what everybody's asking. Like, okay, it's fine. I get it. We have the best record in the AL. Okay, I'm not chicken little. This guy's not falling. I don't think Dusty's lost his mind. I don't think Dusty's an idiot. I don't think Dusty's um, a bad person, okay? I know everybody wants him fired and thinks he's the worst thing that happened to the Astros. That's complete bull crap. But what I'm saying is critical decisions like this in a playoff game, you can't do this, okay? Six hits, all singles, period, end of story. And Dusty has got to quit making moves like this. Okay. All right. I guess I'm back. <laughs> well, no, uh, so, you don't, you, dude, uh, you don't have to leave the room. I'm just that was your to monologue. That was your Shakespearean no. monologue. No, Romeo, I'm not trying Romeo. to be Shakespearean. <laughs> Eric, I'm not trying to be Shakespearean or dramatic. I'm just I trying know. to be real. And no, we don't need to fire Dusty. Dusty will be gone after this year. Joe Espada will take over. But this kind of decision, Eric, in a playoff game would be critical and crucial. Right now, it is the regular season. The Yankees lost, whatever. It's all a wash at this point, but you would have loved to have this win back. You also have to point fingers at the offense because they didn't get the job either. So don't forget about them if you're going to criticize this team. Yeah, as good as the offense has been recently, it seems to have took a, taken a back step. I mean, they got off to a uh, hot start in the first inning, and you're like, yeah, that it's going to keep on going. We're going to get another six or seven runs. And it just felt like it was going to be the same thing that happened in the A series. And all of a sudden, they just went ice cold. And you score two runs in the first inning, not out of the rest of the time. That's what kind of what happens in that situation. And and Bregman uh, usually Bregman usually delivers in those situations, Eric, when you got bases loaded and he just popped up. He didn't have it tonight. And I was really thinking he was going to do something and it just didn't happen. I don't want to alarm anybody, but Alvarez is batting 296. I know that's still good, but um, he's been over 300 for most of the year. Um, his OPS is still 1020, so that's good. Uh, Bregman's up, st his OPS is still 814. Uh, Tucker had a stolen base today, like I said earlier, and uh, they called him out, but then he was like, Nope, nope, I'm safe. I'm set. Go check the, the tape. And they called him safe. But um, overall, I mean, Myers had that hit earlier, I mean, hit as well. And I want to root for the guy. I really do want to root for the guy. He had a hit, but the hit didn't do anything for the team. I know. And that's the problem is like in this game, you have like, look at it. There's um, no, t no runners stranded. Uh, sorry. They're zero for five with runners in uh, scoring position. You're not going to win a game like that. And there's um, eight uh, runners left on base. So overall it just was just not a great game. Uh, Matan came in and kind of squashed a bug a little bit, but all you had to do is get one freaking out. And her yeah. could have got that out or kitty. I still had six pitches, six pitches. He could have got till he got to a hundred. And I know you're probably trying to save the arm and you're trying to play the matchups, but this, in this situation, I don't normally blame the, the manager for the game, but yeah, I'm going to join that crowd for this one. Well, time. the manager blamed himself, Eric. It's okay uh, to blame. I know you're like, you, you, you don't want to be that guy, but sometimes it's okay to be that guy. And, you know, Eric, sometimes you just have to go to betonline.net because it's the fastest and easiest way to check on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events in the number one online source for odds, lines, and all games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting to scores, podcasts, they have you covered. Head to BetOnline today to on your mobile device, sorry, and learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. And Eric, this is what I want to tell the people before we get going on this show again, is if you are looking for seats when Carlos Correa comes back with Minnesota and plays, you need to go to Simple Seats. Why? Because it's a locally owned ticket company and they do not tack on 
a fee. Most websites give you a 20% fee at the end at checkout, and you're like, oh crap, these tickets are more expensive than I thought. Not at Simple Seats. It's where fans go. It's where I go. It's where Eric goes to get our seats. If you're not a season ticket holder like us, go to Simple Seats. It's easy. They even have the zone seating where you can pick a zone, and they discount the ticket, and they find the seat for you. And it's not just Astros. It's Texans, Dynamo, Texas A&M, UT, and U of H. More teams on the way. So check out the best prices and pick your exact seat if that's what you want to do. So right now, I want you to go to simpleseats.com and get an account. Use the code LOCKEDON10 to save $10 off in your first purchase of $50 or more. Simple seats, better prices, no fees. It's that simple. All right, here is Jose Arquiti after the game. Yes, but this is the decision of the manager, and I respect that. Or uh, he was asked if he feels like he could get the last out in the um, eight, it said seventh inning, but I think they meant the eighth inning. Um, so, uh, yeah, he said yes, but but this is the decision of the manager, and I respect that. Well, yeah, I mean, he's not going to throw his. Well, it was it was seven and two thirds inning, so that's why they probably said seventh inning. Um, but yeah, Jose Arquiti is not going to throw Dusty Baker under the bus. He's, he's not going to say anything negative about his manager. That clubhouse is together um, where the fans are like, you know, they're like, they want Dusty gone. They think Dusty's terrible. The players have Dusty's back. And so make no bones about it. There is no splintering of the clubhouse and you don't want that. I, I just, there are some moves and you can, you can look, you can pull up Dusty's name. You can pull up bullpen use and all that stuff. And you can see there is a history of calls that people have criticized him for over the years. My hope is that this club is good enough to overcome any of those things. But at the end of the day, in a game like this, your offense, I don't care who's out there still has to hit whether it's Dubon leading off, which I disagreed with and still disagree with, even though he got a couple hits or, whether it's just moving the lineup around or putting your maximum lineup, putting Chaz McCormick out there who's been hitting the cover off the ball, you might have actually had a chance today. Maybe sub in Altuve a little bit sooner, give him at least two at-bats. Okay, half game rest, he's good, let him go in there. But then again, what are we going to have tomorrow? Dusty Baker's been rolling out a defensive lineup behind Justin Verlander. And there was someone who did a deep dive into these things, Eric. And do you know that with that defensive lineup, they all they needed was 1.2 runs on average in the starts that he had, and they would have won. Had he gone with an offensive lineup, the possibilities of Justin Verlander already being at close to 20 wins would be a reality right now. But Dusty likes a defensive lineup behind Justin Verlander. Yeah, he's old school, and um, he's he goes has that old school uh, mindset, I guess, and he just believes in that, I guess. So I I don't know. This it's just a weird situation. Um, to you have the manager. Um, I think that Joe Espada is probably going to be the manager of the future for the Astros. Um, but you have to think that he has some say in some decision making. But I I think that Dusty Baker is making all the key the keys here. But before we kind of go into the the release schedule, a couple of news and notes from around the league. Um Chris Woodward Ward, sorry, Chris Woodward, uh the Rangers manager, was just fired today. Um, so, um, I, my conspiracy theorist side of me thinks that I, this is in result for them, um, calling out Alex Bregman for, uh, and Astros for cheating with that intentional balk the other day. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'm totally no, kidding, like, but <laughs> the Rangers, hate no, us. I, I know, I know, but, uh, I think this is just because they, um, were supposed to be this good team this year, even though they had no pitching this year, except for Martin Perez. But, um, they didn't have enough pitching to compete, and you have a team like the Astros and the Mariners who are good, and the Angels sh- should be good, but they're not. Um, and so also they had a historically bad record in one-run games this year, meaning uh, he mismanaged the bullpen or the team in general. So uh, the Dude, it's just weird the Rangers, where they t- did that. Good. The Rangers spent a half a billion dollars to be terrible. I mean, this is a poorly run team. Let's just be honest. The best thing they did was 
their draft this year and the draft the year before. Hopefully that gets them somewhere because they need to be competitive in this, in this division. Basically they're the angels 2.0 right now. Um, when, when we get to the playoff uh, schedules, I want to point out something in the um, ALDS, which I think is going to be really, really key in the division series as far as it comes like games in between or even the ALCS. Um, because it actually the ALDS, it looks like you may have an opportunity to see Justin Verlander possibly twice if you need it. Yeah. And uh, Walker Bueller will have season ending uh, elbow surgery on August yep. 23rd. So that means when the Astros face the Dodgers again in the World Series, they will not they uh, see Walker Bueller. They they won't. They'll have Dustin May. The, the Dodgers will find a way to screw it up. They can't win a regular. They can't win a 162 game season in LCS. It's going to be the Braves or the Mets, and I think it's going to be the Mets. The Braves totally trolled the Mets today. Um, they hit a home run in Atlanta, and they played the trumpet song, which is Edwin Diaz walk up song when he comes from center field up at city field. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought that was great, but I was talking to Mets fans tonight on the space and they were like, forget about it. Like these guys forget them. I still think it's going to be Mets Astros in the world series, to be honest. And the Yankees are free falling. They keep on losing two and eight in their last uh, games. And uh, there's a, um, a power rankings and the Yankees are all the way down to number four. How do you like them apples, Yankees fans? It's about Ooh. them time. They should have been down there like three, four weeks ago, Eric. I mean, Eric, right. it it should have been the Astros and the Dodgers one and two going back and forth the entire time because we all knew what was inevitable, that, that the Astros are better than every team in the American League. And the only reason why the Yankees were up top is because they're the freaking Yankees, right? People live in the past. And it's like Big Poppy said, duh, Yankees lose. So once again, the Yankees lose. All right. So let's get take a look at the schedule. The ALDS will start October 11th. Uh, I believe the Astros' last regular season game will be October 5th, if I remember correctly. Then you have the wild card games that will mm-hmm. take place. Hopefully the Astros don't have to deal with that. Uh, they maintain either first or second place. So oh, they're dude, really? Come on. <laughs> they, come on. But the but the thing about the wild card game, Eric, is they are they are games back to back to back. They are three days yeah, in a row. I know. And then they get one day off. So seventh, eighth, and ninth, boom, they get off the tenth. That's a travel day. They start on the eleventh. So those wild card games are gonna be crazy because I think it's gonna have a huge advantage for the teams that have buys in both leagues. Yeah. So you have the ALDS. You're going to have um, uh, the AL uh, game one will be on Tuesday. Then um, you have a day off. And then uh, on, the, on the 13th, you play game two. And then you have a day off. And then you play, you travel to play game three. And then game four um, is on the 16th. And game um, five is on the 17th. So basically, uh, there's no, there's no, except for in between, like at the first two, uh, three games, there's no travel days. Uh, so it's just back to back to back. So no off. Well, day. right. Well, but you have the off day between game one and two, and then you and have three. the off day between game two, two and, and three. three. Right. But not so after what that. They're saying, yeah. I know. But what I'm saying is if Verlander were to start game one and you needed and you needed him to go even in a game four, you could do that realistically because there would be enough days in between there. And I, I'm just saying this sets up great for the Astros. And one of the things we're going to do here pretty soon is we're going to talk about, and we're going to decide on who I know who I would start as, as my four starters in the playoffs. And Eric's going to pick his four and we're going to do a special show, the starting rotation for the Houston Astros going into the playoffs. Somebody said if we had Hinch, our kitty would have never seen the seventh inning. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Our kitty would have been gone in like the fifth inning. Our kitty would have been gone like way Just early. ask Zachary oh, Keith. Brutal. <laughs> oh, brutal. Oh, wow. Uh, so in the uh, national, in the, um, the ALCS, um, you have uh, in the ALCS game one, you'll play it on 19th and the 20th and then you have then you play yeah. you have day off 
Mm -hmm. and then you play game three on the 22nd and then you play game four on the 23rd right and then game five on the 24th and then game six on the 25th and game seven on the 26th well if we're playing the yankees if we're playing the yankees this doesn't go past six games astros win it so this is why it. you need more than a four man rotation definitely in the um the ALCS. So exactly. And someone said someone said what do you do on November 5th? Right? Because everybody's right. anticipating that the World Series will go 7 games. The Astros have home field advantage. Game 7 would be I believe at the home field. And so I love I love this lineup. I think the playoffs this year are going to be more fun than they've ever been. And I think for the night, dude, I'm good. The Astros lost. Let's let's go with the JV day. Let's get a victory against Dylan Cease in his poetry shirts or whatever he's promoting in the South Siders of Chicago. And let's win the rest of the games in this series and let them know who the boss is. And, and uh, actually, Justin Verlander on the matchup with Dylan Cease tomorrow, he said, I don't think you get a lot of moments like this with two guys having good years and they match up, things have to align. So it's very exciting. Yeah. So yeah, this is a very exciting moment uh, of the season for the Astros. I know today was a little bit disappointing with the outcome. So hopefully the Justin Verlander just pitches good and the Astros get enough offense to carry the team. But uh, so who, so who do you think gets to start tomorrow? McCormick or Myers? Uh, well, Dubon is going to play in center field because he is Justin Verlander center fielder. Why do you have we to talked about this Brett. like that? We I know. Why Brett. do you? I know, but I'm in denial. <laughs> I want Chaz McCormick in center field. I don't want. I want. I want Mancini left. McCormick center, and I want Tucker in right field. I want. Is Jeremy Payne still have a stiff neck? Give me a Lebdis Diaz all day at shortstop. Altuve at second. Um, you know what? No, put, put Mancini, put Mancini at first base. No, he's not going to do it. It's a defensive lineup. Gosh, dang it. Maldonado's going to, you need your gold glove, uh, gold glove winner at first base. That's why Yuli's going to be at first base. He does lead in scoops. He (laughs) does lead in scoops. Like, you know, like, you know, two scoops of raisin brand. I guess that's a thing, but whatever. Anyways, here's the thing folks uh, hey don't, uh, Muhammad, don't get too worked up what he really said that he really said that Dubon is J- Justin Verlander's center fielder because he has Ask, the best arm yeah we're just the messenger don't 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 take us out take out like like, like don't <laughs> it's not on us we're just delivering a message the bottom line is folks don't forget we're always positive always strokes the Astros are still leading the American League the Astros still have one of the best teams, if not the best team in all of baseball. We need to be thankful for that. Focus on the good things. I promise you, it's not worth getting upset. You can question and you can have conversations, but realize these are real people at the end of the day, and they want to win probably more than you want want them to win. I promise you that. That's why they're the pros and we're not. And uh, there's some rumors going around that um, somebody doesn't really like Chaz McCormick. So um, somebody... Uh, so maybe you about Dusty what, Baker. Yeah. So see, I don't, but see th- this guy's, this guy's like 72. I don't think he's going to be like, I don't like you. I'm not going to play you. He's not 10. <laughs> like that's really not an intelligent conversation. He doesn't like Dusty Baker. Doesn't like this player. I, I, I don't know. Like, like, you know, I mean, yeah. Dusty Baker's not inviting Kyle Tucker and Jake Myers to play Fortnite with him and like not calling Chaz McCormick. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what it sounds like to me. Um, and I'm not, I, I look, I'm not like a dusty fanboy, but I'm just saying like, I'm frustrated with his moves today. I thought the lineup was unnecessary. I didn't like how the lineup was ordered, but dusty does have his favorites. I just hate the conversation. It just sounds like we're like 10 year olds picking like which friend we went to invite to the party first kind of thing. Right. Um, bottom line is let's, you know, it goes Stros. We could, we could, we could <laughs> yeah. drive this into the ground. I've got a, I've got school tomorrow I know. and you've got school tomorrow I know. and we need to get on the road to end on a positive note. The Astros lead baseball in um, most offensive uh, runs saved this year. And they are 11 runs better than the tiger. 
tiger. So that's according to the fielding Bible. So the Astros are have a good outfield. So I know we gripe a lot about the outfield, but they do have a good outfield. So that's all we got for this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. Make sure you tune in to us. <laughs> and I guess Dusty's favorite is Brett, H-Town Wheelhouse. And I guess I'm not his favorite, so that's fine. But you can find me at Eric Talkstros. Find Brett at H-Town Wheelhouse. We are the Locked on Astros podcast, and we are psyched to be watching Justin Verlander versus Dylan Cease tomorrow. And Ghost Rose, and um, see you around, and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube.